Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about Math 120, Section 5.4. Section 5.4 deals with irrational numbers. Now irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be expressed as fractions. as fractions. There is no fraction that equals to these numbers. Common examples of irrational numbers, pi, e, and what we're going to talk about today, which are radicals. Radicals, in common terms, are numbers resulting from taking a root and specifically for our purposes, we're going to be talking about square roots. Those are not the only radical numbers, but those are the ones we're going to be talking about for our course, our square roots. Now, we're also going to talk about perfect squares, which perfect squares are numbers that have square roots, right? And let's write the perfect squares, because that will help us. We'll write the first 10. They are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, and so on. These are the perfect squares. These all have square roots. Any number between 1 and 100 that is not one of these 10 numbers will not have a perfect square. It will be irrational. So let's talk about the product rule for radicals. The product rule for radicals says that the square root of A times the square root of B is equal to the square root of A times B within the square root sign. I can push products together underneath radicals. Products, only products, you cannot do this with plus, minus, or divide. We'll have a separate rule for adding and subtracting. So the product rule for radicals, you can multiply like that. So simplifying radicals, how do we simplify? Well, we use the product rule, that's why we learned it, and we look for perfect square factors. I check if the number divides by any perfect square factors and use the product rule. Now what does that look like? Let's look at 18. I want to see if any of these perfect squares divide it, and if they do, what the biggest one that divides it is. Well, 1 does, but that doesn't really help me, right? Learning that 1 divides the number isn't very enlightening. 4 doesn't, 9 does. Yeah, that divides 18, right? 16 doesn't. And now I'm bigger, so I'm going to stop checking. What I want to do is I want to write the square root of 18. I'm going to split 18 into 9 times 2. Because, look at this rule. That means this is the same as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. But I know the square root of 9. I know that the square root of 9 is 3. And then I have times the square root of 2. We usually write those next to each other. Oops, sorry, that should be a 2. We usually write those next to each other. Let me rewrite the whole thing. 3 square root of 2. The multiplication is implied, right, if I don't write the multiplication symbol. So that's our first example. What about 80? What's the largest number in this list that divides 80? Well, it's 16. 16 divides 80. You might want to check to be sure. 4 does also, but 16 is the biggest. Well, the square root of 80 is the same as the square root of 16 times 5. Because I know what the square root of 16 is. So after I split the radical apart, the square root of 16 is 4 square root of 5. So notice square root of 80 should be the same as 4 square root of 5. Let's take a look. What is the square root of 80? 
is 8.9442719. Let's remember that, 8.944, right? What's the square root of five? All right, I want four of those times four. 8.944, they're the same. Four times the square root of five is the same as the square root of 80, right? We can double check with the calculator that we have reduced correctly. Notice 16 was the largest number that is a perfect square. Now, what if you need a bigger number? Well, can we find the perfect squares after 100? Yeah, just type in 11 times 11, right? 11 times 11. The next one would be 121. Then 12 times 12 would be 144. 13 times 13 would be 169, and so on and so forth. You can keep finding the perfect squares as you need them, right? Usually, the first 10 is sufficient for our purposes, though, right? Now, adding and subtracting radicals, if I have a square root of b plus c square roots of b, then I can add the a and the c together and glue it to the front. Notice they have to have the same number under the radical. It cannot be different. You have to have the same thing inside the square root in order to combine them. So let's take a look here. 5 square roots of 3 plus 4 square roots of 3. What is 5 plus 4? That's 9 square roots of 3. Doesn't change what's under the radical. I just add the numbers in front. 2 minus 6 plus, what number's here if there's not one in front? It's 1, right? Whenever you don't write the number in front, it's always 1. 2 minus 6 plus 1? Well, 2 minus 6 is negative 4, plus 1 is negative 3. So the numbers out front combine to give me negative 3, and I still have square root of 5 glued on to the mix. Now let's look at the next one. 4 square root of 3 minus square root of 12. Does that work? Those don't have the same thing under the square root, do they? So I can't combine these. However, square root of 12 is not simplified because... Let's do some scratch work. Square root of 12 is the same as square root of 4 times square root of 3. 4 times 3 gives me 12, doesn't it? And 4 is a perfect square. This is the same as 2 square roots of 3. So I'm going to rewrite my problem. 5 square root 3 minus, instead of square root of 12, I'm going to write 2 square root of 3. Now I know 5 minus 2. I can do this now because I have the same square root. 5 minus 2 is positive 3, and I have square root of 3. So I can add or subtract radicals. Notice, if we can reduce in the middle of the problem, we need to before we can combine, right? We should always check if we can reduce, if we can simplify our radicals. Now, multiplying. Well, we've already been using this rule, right? We've already been producting, right? What is 3 times 27? 3 times 27 is 81, which I know that square root gives me plain old 9. That was nifty. 3 times 13, well, that gives me 39. And then I should check that I can't reduce that. Do any of these numbers up here divide 39? 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, none of them do. This is reduced as much as it can be. Our third example, 6 times 10 is 60. And then I should check if that reduces. Do any of these numbers divide 60? Um, 4 does. 4 divides 60. 9, no. 16, no. 25, 36, 4. No, no, no. 4 does, though, because 60 is 4 times 15, which would be square root of 4, square root of 15, and square root of 4 is plain old 2, right? So the square root of 10 times the square root of 6 should be two square roots of 15. Notice we had to do a little bit of work to go from the original presentation to the simplified answer, but we got there, right? So be careful with radicals. Next, the quotient rule for radicals. If I have square root of A over square root of B, that's the same thing as square root of A over B. Radicals play nicely with division. You can bring the division inside of a radical sign. So let's look. Square root of 75 over square root of 3. Well, according to my new rule, that should be the square root of 75 over 3. 
which 75 divided by 3 I know to be 25. 75 divided by 3 is 25. And then the square root of 25, hey, that's plain old 5. In my second example, square root of 60 over square root of 5 will be square root of 60 over 5. I'll bring it inside, which is then the square root of 60 divided by 5 is 12. Now I should check if I can reduce this. Square root of 12. That divides by 4. Square root of 4, square root of 3, right? 4 times 3 gives me 12. I'm using the product rule now. And square root of 4 is 2. Square roots, 3. So the square root of 12 reduces, or sorry, the square root of 60 over the square root of 5 reduces to 2 square roots of 3 when all is said and done. Notice I'm using multiple rules. Quotient rule, product rule, and I'm making sure I reduce. Now the last, rationalizing the denominator. Whenever you have a radical in the denominator, always rationalize. How do we rationalize? Well, step one, multiply top and bottom by the radical in the bottom. And then step two, simplify. Now this might look a little weird, but let's take a look. Five over square root of two. How do we rationalize this denominator? Well, I multiply the top and the bottom by the square root that was in the bottom. Because square root of 2 times square root of 2 is going to be square root of 4. Hey, that's nifty. Over 5 times square root of 2. I can't bring that 5 inside because it does not have a square root. That will stay 5 square roots of 2. Now, 5 square roots of 2, I can't simplify that in the top. But square root of 4 in the bottom, I can reduce to plain old 2. So I will. Now, similarly, in the second example, 5 over square root of 12, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 12 because that will give me 5 square roots of 12 in the top over the square root of 144. When you have square roots, you can combine them, right, in the bottom. Now, the bottom reduces to plain old 12, right? But in the top, I can reduce the 12 in the top too, can I? Because 144, that square root's to 12, right? What about 12? That's the same as the square root of 4 times 3, which we've seen a couple times. We'll reduce to 5 times 2 square roots of 3 over 12. I took the square root of 12 in the top and reduced it. 5 times 2 is 10. Square root of 3 over 12. Now, this might seem like a lot of simplifying, but 10 over 12, does that reduce? Does that fraction reduce 10 over 12? It does, right? I can take 2 out of both. I can divide by 2 to get 5 Square root of 3 over 12 divided by 2 is 6. So I started with 5 over the square root of 12, and I finished with 5 square root of 3 over 6. Let's check. What is square root of 12? Is 3.464-ish, right? 3.464. 5 divided by 3.464 gives me 1.443 ish, right? 1.443. Well, let's check. 3 square rooted times 5 divided by 6. 1.443. I got a little bit of a different decimal, but that's because I'm rounding, right? I was just trying to be close. But I notice they're the same on the calculator when I type them in. I know I've done the question correctly. You can always check your reductions by going through the calculator. A lot of steps to reduce, right? First, we rationalized. That's how we got here. Then I simplified the bottom to be 12, and I started working on the top. The top reduced down to 
2, square roots of 3. 5 and 2 made 10. And then the square root of 3, I couldn't do anything with, but the 10 and the 12, I could reduce that fraction. My last example, square root of 5 over square root of 10. Well, we're going to want to rationalize. Square root of 5 over square root of 10. The first thing I might want to do is look to see if it becomes anything nice by using the quotient rule, like I did up here, right? 60 over 5 did work nice. 75 over 3 did work nice. 5 over 10, that's not going to reduce to a whole number, right? That's going to stay a fraction. So let's work with the denominator. Times square root of 10. Times square root of 10. Gives me, in the top I get square root of 50, and in the bottom I get square root of 100. Because the top, square root of 50, over square root of 100 is 10. Now, I'm not done, right? Because what goes into 50? Do any perfect squares divide 50? Uh, yeah, 25 does. Because 25 and 2 make 50. And the square root of 25, right, the square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 2 over 10. And then 5 and 10, do those fractional numbers reduce? And turns out, yes, they do. I can divide both by 5. Uh, 1 goes away, square root of 2 in the top over. Uh, 10 divided by 5 gives me 2 in the bottom. So square root of 5 over square root of 10. First, we used the rationalization of the denominator to get a whole number in the bottom, right? We got rid of the denominator. We rationalized it. And then we reduced to get square root of 2 over 2. Now, with radicals, you always want to first rationalize your denominators. Always, always, always. You can never have a radical in your denominator. Your answer is incorrect if you have a square root in the bottom. Second, you always need to reduce by factoring out perfect squares if you can. Always. If the answer is square root of 50, you need to reduce that to 5 square roots of 2. Always reduce your radicals. So rationalize your denominators, then reduce your radicals if you can. And then lastly, notice how some of our fractions reduced as well. 5 tenths became, you know, 1 half. We didn't write the 1 though. 10 twelfths became 5 6. Always reduce any fraction parts at the end. And that is how we simplify radicals. So that ends our section 5.4. Thank you all for joining me, and I will see you next time.